How's it going guys? Just wanted to show you something a little bit different. Normally, you know, I do a lot of roach videos and that kind of stuff. Um, but I've gotten quite a few different things started. If you want to look in there, you might notice some ants. Briefly mentioned them in my uh, video about my bladder orientalis. But these are a colony of Camponotus nearticus. It's a uh, species of carpenter ant, uh, wood boring ants, uh, native to Pennsylvania, and this is their little outworld that you're looking at. Uh, this is just a chamber where they can uh, get their food and where they come out and dump the debris and waste from the colony. A uh, little connector tube here. And this is a formica or a formica nest from Ants Canada, another YouTuber that has a ton of subscribers and a bunch of ant videos and everything like that. He produces these uh, these nests, so I got one of them just to try out, and it has so far worked really well. So I really like the fact that it has a cover. Uh, ants typically live in a dark colony, so it's one of those things where. It's nice, even if I'm in here with the lights on, everything is hidden. So, sorry for the reflectiveness, this is glass covered. Um, but you can kind of get a look in here, and... This is the colony at its start. Uh, this colony is... Let's see, I found them frozen, pretty much, solid. Uh, they hibernate in tree stumps over the winter. And when I got these, they were, eh, I'm, I'm going to say it was pretty cold out. <laughs> they were frozen solid. So, luckily, I did get the queen uh, when I pulled the colony out. If I can get shot into the brood chamber at all. It's really hard to get my camera to focus through here. There we go. I'm not seeing a whole lot in there that I can really show you guys, unfortunately, but there's a cluster of eggs in there that they've been producing. Got some uh, air vents on the side here and here. And then there's a uh, water tube up here, so they have constant drinking water, just cotton, cotton balls. And underneath of the nest, you can see this little tray here. It has water in it. There's actually cotton underneath of this where the... You can pour water in here and it soaks into the cotton. And you see all those little laser cut holes in this side. And that increases the humidity into the colony. Now obviously they don't want as much humidity, so they're kind of sitting in the middle here for the most colony. And I didn't put them in here, I put them in the uh, outworld. And then I let them kind of make their way into here. Which is a much more comfortable area for them. Uh, when you're dealing with ants, you Typically, you want to use a really good barrier, but unfortunately, this uh, I'm using a Fluon, which is great, except for when it gets wet. And guess what? Humidity builds up in this outworld like crazy. I need to vent it out. Uh, right now, the Fluon is not keeping anything from climbing. So, you can see the ants have absolutely no problems getting up and down the sides of these um, little acrylic cases here. I got these acrylic cases from uh, Amazon. It was like a four pack for 30 bucks. Uh, they're great, beautiful, nice and clear plastic. Um, there's actually a little bottle cap in here I've been using as their honey dish. Uh, ants are super easy to care for. Um, what I give them is every couple of days, um, give them a couple drops of honey in there. Well, more than a couple, I guess. Uh, I basically fill the cap up every couple days, and I also give them a uh, roach, uh, medium-sized cockroach every. Uh, let's fill that up, and once they find it, they'll get over there and they'll clean all that up. The uh, it takes them about a half a day to empty that cap out, but uh, I'll put a roach in there and they'll chew it up. You can see there's a little bit of from a roach in there. I don't know how well my camera will focus on that, but down there that's a lateralis stuck in the corner. So 
they use the protein mainly for their um, for their young. Uh, these guys go through a complete metamorphosis from an egg to a larva to a pupa to an adult. Um, while cockroaches, which is what I typically make videos of, they go through an incomplete metamorphosis, which is just egg, nymph, 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 nymph to adult. So they don't really do anything other than molt their exoskeletons and just grow bigger. They look the same all through their life, more or less. Uh, their ultimate molt, their penultimate molt or whatever, they'll get their wing buds and wings and all that kind of stuff, but unlike cockroaches, ants go through a complete metamorphosis and I said this colony is wild caught, um, just dug them out of a stump frozen. That is for me uh, really convenient to start a medium sized colony but I know typically you're not going to want to go through and dig out in the woods for extended periods of time. You might, I mean, I, you could be like me and just weird enough to dig in a hole, uh, you know, in the woods and find ants. But uh, if you're digging, good on you. You'll find them. They're everywhere. Uh, ants are super plentiful. You want to try to make sure you find the brood chamber and the queen if you are getting ants. Uh, otherwise, you just got a bunch of workers and eventually the colony will just die off. But I was lucky enough to get the queen in here, and she is producing eggs uh, underneath that mass of ants right here. Uh, there's a big old cluster of eggs in there, and uh, they're starting to produce the pupa now. Uh, so the eggs are starting to grow. It'll be a couple more weeks until I have uh, fresh uh, ants in this colony. Um, if you go into the springtime, you're going to look at it's basically spring to fall, you get different ants. Um, they have their nuptial flights, and they go out, and you can find them with their wings on or their wings off. If you find the queens with their wings off, they probably have been mated, but it's not guaranteed that the wings on mean they haven't been. Um, if you find a cluster of flying ants buzzing around, uh, they're probably in their mating flight. It doesn't guarantee that that queen has been mated at all, so it's better if you find individuals that have already mated later in the afternoon. Um... You know, so you can find them any time of the day, really, but typically it's the day after a heavy rainstorm. You'll see the uh, the ants out uh, in their nuptial flights and stuff like that, and you can find uh, mated queens walking around. You'll want to put them into a uh, test tube setup like this. You can Google that. There's a ton of information on test tube setups for ants. I kind of skipped that step <laughs> by digging a whole colony out, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm impatient, so I wanted to start with a bunch of them all at once. Uh, I actually found two of these colonies while I was digging. The other one I gave to a uh, uh, co-worker, and uh, he is raising. It was a much smaller colony, maybe uh, 50 members or so. So it would have been like a cluster like that uh, right there. Uh, but it did have a queen. They were producing uh, eggs and everything like that. So in a... Uh, couple months they'll be as big as this one is but this nest is a little big for this colony right now but they're they're using it they're gonna figure out what to do with it eventually they'll uh, start to figure out where their brood goes and where their eggs go where the queen hangs out uh, where their dumping sites are and that kind of stuff which I don't want them to really dump their trash in here anywhere and so far they haven't except for the test tube they've been dumping dead in there but I want them to dump their dead and their trash and all that other junk out here in their outworld but now I'll, uh, I'll work with them on that and I'll adjust humidity as I need to to get that to happen. Um, but so far it's been a, a fun little adventure with these guys. Uh, getting them into the outworld from the, the deli container I had them in when I was out in the woods. That was interesting. Uh, luckily, uh, Kampa noticed most of them do not have stingers. Uh, they can bite, but these are a smaller species of carpenter ant. They're not like uh, Pennsylvanicus, which is a very large carpenter ant, one of the biggest ones around here, three-quarter inch queens and stuff like that. Uh, and their super majors are pretty big too. Um, but these can't really hurt you. Um, I picked them up. I had like dozens of them running up and down my arms and stuff. and I, they, they were trying to bite me, but it didn't really, they couldn't get a good grip. Uh, so it didn't hurt at all to pick them up and throw them where they needed to be, but it was interesting having that many ants running around all at once trying to get them in a place. Um, so their, their care has so far been super easy. Uh, like I said, just 
give them a cap full of honey, um, you know, once or twice a week, every couple days. I've been doing it right now just to kind of amp everything up for them. And then once or twice a week, give them a cockroach or a superworm or something. Just get some protein in there for their uh, pupa. But yeah, this uh, these hybrid nests, these for, uh, formica nests have been, uh, I think they're like $40. Uh, they're shipping from the Philippines, uh, so it took them a month and a half to get here, I believe. Uh, but as you can see, they have a glass glass top on them, and you know, it scared the heck out of all those ants by tapping that. Whoops. Um, the glass top is not, uh, you know, as I, I was expecting it to be possibly damaged when it got here, but no, they were all perfectly safe and everything worked out really well with the shipping. So I ended up, I did get two of them. There's another one over there. And uh, that other one is going to go with a colony of uh, citronella ants, which I will find those uh, sometime in the spring here. Uh, they live around my house, so I'll dig up the uh, colony and throw them in that one. Uh, they're just an interesting looking ant. They're about the same size as these, a little more stout. Uh, I, I'm not sure what family they belong to offhand there, but I'll figure it out. I think they're, I don't know, if they're not uh, Componotus. I think they might actually be Formicas. Um, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, any of you ant folks can, myrmecology, you know, people that may or may not care about ants, um, you can correct me on that one. Uh, they're called citronella ants around here. Um, I gotta find their actual scientific name, and then I'll go ahead and post that in the comments somewhere. But they're interesting because they do produce a, uh, defense odor that smells just like a citronella candle, hence their name. But uh, there's two colon there are two species around here. The one of them actually takes over and enslaves the uh, colonies of another species. But I'm hoping to find the one that is self-productive and not uh, the slavers. Otherwise, I'd need another colony of ants to introduce them into. And that's just going to be a pain in the butt. Because they have to constantly like steal pupa from that other colony to raise up and then uh, have as their own. Anyway, this is my first venture into ants, uh, ant keeping in general. Um, I always thought they were neat as a kid, but I never really went ahead and did anything about it. I don't know what this dude's doing. Out of all behavior. Anyway, um, yeah, it's first uh, first time I ever got into ants as an adult, so uh, it's it's interesting. Definitely. Uh, more fun than those uh, little sand nests or the ones that are like the gel. The gel's just bad. Don't do not do them. They're just bad. I don't know why anybody gets them. They're just going to kill your ants. Uh, this is nice. If you have a little bit of money to invest, I'd definitely suggest getting one of these. Um, again, if you go to Ants Canada, they're pretty known on YouTube for all this ant stuff. So um, I'm sure if anybody cares about ants, they have heard of Ants Canada by now. But... Like I said, shipping to the U.S. took a little time, but it got here perfectly fine, perfectly safe. Um, everything fits together nicely. It came with um, these two here. It came with this adapter, this test tube, and this uh, uh, plastic tube here with another adapter and some other odds and ends with it. This Outworld I bought separately. Um, I, like I said, I got it off Amazon. It's like a three or four pack for like 30 bucks. Um, they're very hard acrylic plastic. You have to be careful when you're drilling them uh, because the the drill bits, uh, if you're pushing too hard, you'll just crack it. So just go very slowly with it. I suggest setting everything up, including your outworld, before you put the ants in. Um, I actually had the outworld before I had the colony. So I had to drill that hole and plug it immediately uh, before I transferred them in. So they made their way over into the colony after like a two day period, but it worked out. If you guys have any questions, you know, give me a shout. I'll do my best to answer them. Ants are my specialty, but they are fun. I'm starting to learn a lot more about them and, uh, you know, like comment, share. I'll see you all around.